Hello and welcome back to another out of spec detailing video. Behind the camera, I have Max here with me today that runs our out of spec guide channel and edits a ton of videos specifically for the detailing channel. We have something a little bit fun today. So we have two cars and a full build quality analysis comparison. Over here, we have the brand new BMW i5 eDrive 40 and then behind over here, we have, of course, the competitor to this, the Model S Long Range. Now, the question we're here to answer today, this car on paper really makes no sense when you look at the specs, the performance, the range, and of course, the price when comparing it to a Model S. But there's a lot more things that go into these vehicles, such as build quality. So we're gonna be comparing these two contrasting and figuring out what is really worth your money between the i5 and the Model S. Let's jump into it. The new i5, what it really comes down to is this is a luxury SUV, where the Model S is just full of all the technology, the of course amazing Tesla supercharger network, and it's just, I would say, Max, I don't know, it's a Tesla. So you're not necessarily always expecting unbelievable build quality on Tesla, whereas you are from BMW. Now, a point I do need to make throughout this comparison, this is a press car from BMW. Now, press cars from BMW and a lot of manufacturers out there go through what we call a quality inspection where they'll actually start to shim some of the doors and all of the alignment to make sure they're absolutely perfect. So we will talk about that. I will also have a customer delivered i5 in about two months time that we'll do an updated build quality review on to see how it actually looks. But over here, this is a customer delivered Model S. So let's talk pricing, Max, because I think just starting there, this car honestly to me screams expensive. Um, I don't know if you agree with that, but let's just start at the base price. So the eDrive 40, which is a rear wheel drive i5, starts at 66,800 bucks. What do you think of that, Max? That's a lot of money. We have to consider, uh, people will talk about the tax credit. Neither of these cars are getting it because they're sedans and they're both well above 50 grand, but um, you're pushing a lot of money there. That's a competitive class because what are we getting Colton in the Model S for that in terms of performance and range? So Model S actually starts at 74,990 for a long range. That is, the, the nice thing with Tesla is you're not nickel and diming every single little option. This has basically the same seats that a Plaid does, except for now where they change those. We have heated, ventilated seats, all the technology. The biggest things you really can only change with Tesla are your powertrain. So you can get the long range or you can get the Plaid variant, and then you can change your exterior color, your interior color, and that's about it. So this one sitting over here right now is at 79 490. So I would say almost 80 grand. Now this one over here, Max, has about $10,000 worth of options. So this one as tested is 77,645 bucks. So you're essentially paying 2,000 ish dollars more for the Model S with 400 miles of EPA rated range. We definitely know it will not do that on our 70 mile an hour range test. Whereas this is 270 max. Yep, and this is one of the more efficient specs you can get because it's the rear wheel drive. So I think it's actually a little bit worse if you get the uh, M60. Yeah, absolutely. So let's continue going through this. So this is rear wheel drive, that's all wheel drive. And yes, this has a lot of options. If you bump up, to a basically all wheel drive, which is the X drive 40. It's a $3,300 option to go all wheel drive. Now, Max, personally, I don't really understand why even make a rear wheel drive variant of this. Just start it at all wheel drive. I think for 3,300 bucks at, you know, close to 70 ish grand, I think that's kind of a no brainer option in my personal opinion. So if you were to consider that adding $3,000 to the sticker of this, it is more expensive than the long range with $4,000 worth of options on it. So the options on this one, of course, ultra red interior or exterior, which is two grand, the cream interior is 2000 as well. So right off the bat, price wise is just crazy. 
And then let's talk about performance. Now, electric cars are all quick. This one's no exception. On paper, it's pretty darn slow, Max. So this is 5.7 seconds, zero to 60 as it sits. That Model S over there is 3.1. Now, does BMW make something a little bit more spicy to compete with, I guess, the least spicy Model S? Yes, of course they do. And that would be the M60. Now, Max, what do you think that starts at? Uh, M60, well, I actually don't have it in memory, so if I just had to guess, I would say $78,000. $84,100. So you are essentially paying $10,000 more for an M60 than a long range. You're gonna have more range in this, more power in this. I'm not sure it's gonna be quite as spicy on a back road, because you can really turn everything off on an M60. And you're gonna have crazy. better brakes, better suspension, a lot of better hardware. Exactly. So. That's where I'm getting at with this video is on paper, it's very hard not to ignore the Model S when you're looking at this. But when you start putting these figures back to back, especially range, especially power, it's like, ugh, that's kind of a hard choice not to just go for. Yeah, and if you're like a hooligan making TikTok videos or you want that horsepower number, let's consider that 84 grand if we get the M60 of this, well, that's in spitting distance within like $6,000 of a base plaid. That's yes. a, what, 1,020 horsepower tri-motor powertrain. Yeah, so literally double the horsepower from an M60 to a Plaid, and it's $5,000 difference. And I'm sure once you spec up an M60, now I do kind of assume that you probably get a lot more features as standard with the M60 variant, being that it is, what, a uh, $14,000 upgrade, essentially, from the E-Drive X drive 40. These numbers are just all over my brain. But yeah, I think that's the real challenge here. But I think what really, Max, changes the difference between these is when you start getting inside, you start driving the vehicles. They're very different vehicles. They're both big. I wouldn't consider necessarily Model S luxurious. I would say it's nice, but it's not quite as luxury as this, of course, wearing the BMW badge. What are your thoughts on that as far as that analysis between the two. Yeah, well, I haven't spent a ton of time with Raven Model S's, to be honest. I spent a little bit of time in Kyle's Plaid. I know this is a bit newer, and it's obviously a long range, so it's a little bit of a different spec, but I have actually spent a good amount of time recently in the i5. Um, so what I'll just say from my limited experience, and I think you can attest to this too, is that the material quality and the feature content on the interior in this is much more luxury car. Whereas the Model S's, I would say, maybe a step above mainstream like it's premium it's not economy but it's by no means that special especially with how pared down it is you just you know you don't get a heads-up display for instance the model s no way to option that sure um and so this i find has a lot more pizzazz that said you know people may know like i don't i'm not the biggest tesla fan in the world by any means and yet i think just like aesthetically and taste wise I actually don't like a lot of the cosmetics of this vehicle. That's a taste thing, right? We can talk about that sure. all day. But I think, you know, the Tesla approach of like minimal, you know, one screen and all that, that's very far in one direction. This is very far in the direction of let's put lights everywhere. Let's just, you know, I mean, we'll look at the interior in a few minutes, but it's a lot going on. It's not quite as overload to me as the Mercedes EQ line, which is just bonkers, but it is, I think, stretching the boundaries of at least my taste. Okay, I think that's very, very fair. Um, I would say BMW over the last recent years, their car designing has gone like to outer left field. I mean, just take a look at the XM for two seconds and you <laughs> go, what is going on with this company? Now, I personally think the X5 or the X5, the i5 here actually looks quite nice. But I think you'll see in the packaging here, Max, and we talked about this off camera, that you see quite a few compromises when it comes to the packaging of this vehicle compared to something like a Tesla that is a ground up battery electric vehicle architecture, whereas you can have the i5 here in gas or battery electric. For one example, no frunk in this, where you do get it in the Model S. Just a few comparisons there. One thing, Max, that I think is really funny and fascinating. When we did a build quality review on the i4, it has a hatch very similar to Max's Polestar 2, whereas the Model 3, its main competitor, has a more sedan style trunk. Now that's flip-flopped. 
Model S has a hatch over there, a lot more usable, a lot more capable of storing stuff in the back. And then this one has a normal trunk in it. So just some weird discrepancies there. But I do think, Max, there's gonna be a lot of people cross shopping these. I have a particular customer that just purchased one of these. Like I said, it'll be here in two months or so. And he's one of those people, he goes, I will just never buy a Tesla. I don't wanna deal with Tesla. I don't like their build quality. I don't like the man who runs the entire company. And I do think that's where you kind of see some differentiation between there. My friend, Nick, I mean, he is like, I love Teslas. I love the tech in them. They're insanely powerful. I just have a hard time buying them. I'd rather be in a BMW. So I think it's, you know, there's more than meets the eye to just numbers on paper. Max, I gotta say driving this thing, it definitely feels, I love that word you use talking about luxury versus, you know, Tesla and the Model S being premium. You definitely feel a lot more luxurious in there. The NVH is substantially nicer in this, way more quiet. The suspension is extremely compliant. Not to say Model S has a bad, suspension on it. I just find that it's never perfectly sorted, especially on long highway blasts. You kind of get this, um, we call it the Model S torque essentially, where the back end kind of does this and porpoises around on some uneven road. So it, it does, it does kind of reach that mark of premium, but definitely not pushing it to luxury. Yeah, and that's odd to me because, you know, the Model S is definitely more of that sports sedan DNA, even though it's actually technically a liftback, which is one of the things I really like about it. Uh, but yeah, Tesla, to my mind, you know, the Model S has always come with air suspension, uh, as far as I know, right? And this, I think, has air, or it's hydraulic, or maybe it's air in the rear. But other than that, it is coilovers. And so it's a more basic suspension setup. It's actually very similar to the Lucid Air Pure, which I wish we had, because that would yes. be the other competition here. Um, and so in that sense, it's very much a Euro brand BMW doing a more classic setup. And I think that will be to some people's taste more. However, I've noticed though, like this car, and th maybe this is just where BMW has gone in recent years, it's much more leaning. You'd expect it's BMW, but it'd also be sporty. But no, it leans much more into that luxury feel because driving over bumps in this, I mean, this thing just wallows it up mm -hmm. and it weighs a lot. I think I don't have the specs on paper, but I can tell this weighs a lot more than Model S. You mentioned this was built on a platform that BMW designed for both gas and electric vehicles. So inherently there's going to be some packaging compromises there. Not only are you losing a frunk and some space, you're also just gaining a lot of weight. This is not a light machine. I don't think anyone would ever really dream of taking this onto a track, whereas the Model S, especially if you get a plaid, but even a long range, to be honest, you can get some unplugged performance accessories, sure. change the wheels, tires, get some suspension mods, and you can have a pretty uh, venerable you know, track thing there. You can't do that with this. I would say definitely the M60, though, would be obviously more comparable to even the long range, but definitely the Plaid. Plaid has always been one of those vehicles that is completely under brake. One thing that BMW always does right is that nice brake pedal feel and application. So I'd be curious to see, you know, we can let Kyle do those reviews um, when we do have an M60 over on the reviews channel and put them, you know, back to back. But again, that on paper thing, it's, to me, Max, when I looked at the price of this, I go, are you freaking kidding me? Like, yeah. how are they charging this much for that when you have that over there, the Model S? And it's, I think we're seeing this a lot more and more. Tesla has done so much of just driving the price down, driving the market down, that any car you compare it to anymore is like, no matter if it's a 3Y, S, or X, it gets hard. It's just kind of like sometimes on paper, just pick the Tesla when a lot of people like yourself, Max, went completely the opposite way and got something different because you prefer to have something that not everybody else has. So I think that's interesting. But enough of talking about specs on this and kind of ranting. I just wanted to give a good baseline on kind of Max and I's thoughts between this. I don't know. What do you guys think about pricing on this? I personally think way too expensive in my personal opinion. But Yet again, like I was talking about, this is a press car. So I expect this to be absolutely perfect. And in all honesty, Max, it really is. They've gone through, they've made sure the doors are perfect. Now I will say in our build quality analysis reviews, I had a BMW individual i4 in here. I'll leave a link in the description below. It was a customer delivered one. The build quality smoked Tesla, like completely. No panel gaps, perfect fit and finish. 
My only real negative about BMW are some of their interior materials. Yep. We'll talk about that when we get to the inside. They do amazing seats and amazing materials in certain areas. And then you touch some things. It's solid, but it's not the best feeling. So I think that'll be an interesting comparison. But let's walk around here, Max. Definitely we have the front kidney grills. The front end of this is definitely luxury car it's quite imposing i would say especially with those large grills there i still think it's interesting how bmw's grills got really really big and then it seems like they're now starting to get a little bit smaller and we're seeing that with the noia Klasa as well that the they're making the grills even smaller so we went through like a bloat phage and now we're coming back down yeah but to be fair bmw kind of like mercedes i don't think has a very coherent design philosophy i mean model by model it's all over the place so you look at the xm which they still sell as a new car or even the i7 right which is in many ways a more advanced pre even more premium version of this Much those more. still have massive uh, grills or massive fake grills and look very different. So I think BMW is just kind of trying to, to be honest, throw a lot of things at the wall, see what people like. I'm sure. glad there's some diversity in their lineup. And yeah, I don't actually mind the looks of this. Uh, and for the people who are into the, your classic German sports sedan, I think this is kind of where you want to be. It's understated enough, comes in tasteful colors. And like you hinted at and we'll get into, the build quality is pretty dialed in. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think it's important to understand that with press cars, which we drive and see a lot, but I also have a lot of customer cars and it's, you know, my experience is BMW has been really good. Audi has been really good. I would say out of the three German brands, the one I've been least impressed by is Mercedes. Everything you touch on there feels plasticky. It creaks. Yeah. Max, you and I did a EQS and QA e-tron review and it was just like, in the Mercedes, they're like, is this a $40,000 car? Like yeah. for real, yeah. it was really, really wild to see that. But let's just look around here. I mean, panel gaps, honestly, everything fits absolutely perfect in this area. Moving down to the side of the car. Max, we looked at this a little bit earlier. So I have this little gauge back here. This is a little panel gap gauge. Basically has a bunch of little numbers on here starting at five, and then this one goes down to two and a half up to 15. And basically what you do, you can stick this in there and see that's about five and a half millimeters, give or take. But then you come back to this back door, that's about three and a half. So a two millimeter difference there. This is a very great tool for me to do on these build quality reviews so I can quantitatively show you on camera what it actually looks like in person but i would say honestly looking at this i don't nothing sticks out to me here max if i were to say one thing does this little guy here definitely seems a little bit large i mean we're at six millimeter gap there and doesn't fit perfectly flush that's honestly one of the only areas is that little door there can take the viewers around the back here though now, Max, I wanna talk about something here. So charge port. I like that this just has a normal flap. We've all seen this on Rivians, on- Chevy I don't, Blazer EV. It's just, it's crazy. Blazer. Like there is nothing wrong with a normal gas door that does this, except for the fact is most people now forget to close these. So our ID4 has a very similar charge port to this. And I'll look in the rear view mirror and I'm like, oh, I did it again, where the Tesla, you're just unplug on the road. Same with Rivian, same with Lucid, same with, you know, the upper end Tycons, if you get that. But I think it's interesting. One thing that's really wild to me though, Max, you're releasing a car in 2024. BMW has said they are going to Nax. Why is the charge port not over there? Uh, I think that's again, down to the platform, right? We've mentioned this is sharing uh, the platform with the five series actually let me be clear, this is a 5 Series. Technically, yeah. in BMW's strange nomenclature, this is the 5 Series i5 trim. And their nomenclature electric is just kind of a variant of it, which is kind of cool. They're letting people still choose, do you want combustion? Do you want the legendary B58? Or do you want maybe an electric sure. powertrain? Um, and because of that vestigial design and architecture, you get little traits like this, where it's where the gas cap would be. I don't imagine they had a lot of room to maneuver that around. So I can't imagine this is going to be the most forward-thinking vehicle for things like accessing superchargers. Yep. Um, it actually does charge decently. The battery is not bad, but definitely when it comes to this port placement, 
um, you know, it's not going to be great. That said, to be honest, Colton, I think we're all overblowing this. You know, vehicles have the port in the wrong location issue because Tesla's going to build new stalls. They're going to have longer cables. Everyone knows that's an issue. And, um, you know, very few cars actually work well with a supercharger network right now. Okay. Um, so I think that will be a non-issue in several years. Now, I'm going to give my opinion here. And this is my opinion, and you can take it with what you will. I personally think any company going on to the Tesla supercharger network should be required with a NAX port to put it in the rear taillight area or the front end. That's my personal opinion. I also think just understanding using an EV on a daily basis, when you get out of your driver's side, instead of walking all the way around the car to plug it in, so much more convenient to just go to the driver's side rear. Okay, that's my opinion. Take yeah. it with what you will. I think other people are going to completely disagree with me. Now, Max, this has the gloss piano black all the way around it. I think it definitely looks quite nice. One thing I find interesting on the i5 is the use of basically piano black all down the entire side skirt. For me, immediately, that's a huge negative. That's going to get rock chipped very, very easily, going to get scratched very easily. Maybe something people want to throw PPF on. I'm not a huge PPF guy. It's another video. Go watch those. Same with the back here, Max. It's like the high impact areas Let's throw a ton of gloss black there to make it look really, really terrible when you go to buy one of these when they're $30,000 after a couple of years when they've depreciated like yeah. crazy. So yeah, not loving that, that it's like you have to get this, especially if you don't want a black car. Like for me, this is just very, very annoying. Back here on the rear trunk, again, no lift back. I think that's one of the weirdest things that they do that on the i4, but not the 5 Series. I understand it's more of the silhouette, the shape of the vehicle makes it have this, but to me, it just seems a little odd. Now let's open this up here. I didn't even hear that open, did you, Max? Barely, and it so was very quiet. smooth. It was not jerky at all. Not at all, and you're gonna see something totally different on Model S. That's one of those things that I really talk about a lot with build quality is when you just even open up a door handle, you start getting that impression and building kind of your your thought process behind how this car was put together. Yep. Mercedes comes to mind. The first thing you touch getting in that car is that door handle. It is the worst door handle on the entire car market. Yep. I absolutely hate it. It feels like crap. It does not feel nice at all. And to me, it just emulates the entire experience you have inside that everything you touch is so unpremium, but, Let's get this closed. Yeah. I mean, on the build quality example, several cars ago, I daily drove a Mazda 3, the new one they redesigned. It looks really nice. I actually like that vehicle a lot. And Mazda was clearly trying to go up market. But one of the tells that it was a mainstream economy car was the rear doors. Every time I closed them, they felt like they weighed 10 pounds. Okay. It was just, you know, <laughs> like not the same kind of presence and feeling you would get with, let's say, a 5 Series. Sure. And those things, I think, you know, people will say, oh, panel gaps and paint, that's only something, you know, detailers nerd out about, but everyone notices things like that. Yeah, I completely disagree with that. Now, I think a lot of the time it gets overblown. And yes, I'm very nitpicky on cars, but I also think it's important to show people areas that, because I have so much experience. You guys need to realize I'm this far away from the paint for 40 hours working on these cars. So when you do 20 Rivians a year and 30 Teslas a year, you start understanding a little bit more about these cars. And that's why doing these build quality analysis videos, I have a little bit more understanding than the average Joe just walking up to a new car and going, ah, this feels nice. You know what I mean, Max? One thing I think is the strangest on BMW as of late is the rear end. You can never tell if it's, for example, i4 or the 4 Series. <laughs> I can't tell if it's an electric one, if it's a gas one. Now, Is that a problem though? Some people might like that. Well, I just want to look at the electric ones anymore because I don't really care about a 440i, to be perfectly honest with you, Max. I'd rather have the electric powertrain. So I think it's very different how most companies do it. I think Volkswagen does it very similar, Audi, where it's like they have these unique electric characteristics like bars things like that exactly but then you go to tesla and you just immediately know it's an electric car and i think there's a lot of vehicles that have moved that way so bmw i think is kind of in this interesting space where they're kind of right in the middle they're not trying to be too electric but they're not trying to you know completely differ differentiate it 
Yeah, well, I think it's just, again, the mold this car fits. We have to consider, especially in Europe, the 5 Series is a very venerable, uh, like, company car. Everyone drives them. So what BMW is trying to do is make the transition as seamless as possible. You get in your new i5, it is going to have the doors feel like your old 5 Series. Yep. The charge port, which used to be the fuel door, exactly. in the same place, right? Their trunk, instead of a lift bag. They're doing everything to kind of keep those existing customers comfortable, which I don't think is a bad thing. Okay. Yeah. And I think those are fair points. It's just like, to me, I want to know that it's the electric one. And yes, you can look at the emblem and say, okay, this one has the little blue ring around <laughs> it. That is the I-5. And you can, of course, look at the badge, but it's just, when I'm looking at them from a distance, it's so hard to tell in between. Some people may love that. Some people may hate it. Max, what do you think about this big five over here? And I guess, what would this be? The C pillar? Yeah, I'm not in love with it. I guess this is their interpretation of what is it they call it the Hoffmeister kink, the famous kind of BMW design detail where this like angles back in on itself. That's a thing BMW people love to talk about. I'm sure someone in the comments will have thoughts. But uh, this is the the modern interpretation of that. Uh, no chrome. They're just doing this piano black with a embossed five. I think they do, they do the same thing on the seven series. I don't really know if I love it. Um, it seems a little bit showy to me and a bit out of character with how understated this is supposed to be. I would say under character is a great that word for said, that. said, I'm glad it's not like light up because if it is a oh Mercedes, gosh, yes. I bet this would like yeah. illuminate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, this is such an understated car, but when you look at it, it definitely looks luxurious. And I think just the body proportions, it is quite a sleek car. Now, when you look down the side of it, it, it just doesn't scream at you like, whoa, I'm a big expensive BMW. When you look at the front, I would say the front's very imposing. I like the back, the new rear tail lights on it, but yeah, it's just, it's a strange combination in my eye for what they're going for here. I just kind of wouldn't wish they would have turned it up a little bit or I don't know. It's, it's just, I, yeah, maybe we have to look at an M60. I think so. Yeah, I really I really do think so Max what I like up here is how nice this big glass looks now I will tell you model s has the same exact thing that is a Standard feature on that. Do you know if it's standard on here to have a glass roof? Uh, I don't believe it is. We'll look at that and I okay. can put text in the video. But, um, you know, this car in general has options at the wazoo. For instance, even though this isn't an M60, this does have the M Sport mostly cosmetic package, yep. which adds a few flares and details. Yeah, the, the whole M badge to everything. Audi's now doing that with the, the red rhombus putting it on S-line cars and you're like, wait, is that an SQ8 or is that just- And then Kia's doing it too, GT line versus yeah. GT. I mean, it's just the dilution of performance, which I guess is what everyone does. It's so confusing. Whereas like Tesla's like, this is the one you can go the farthest in and the plaid is the fast one. But and it's very simple. The downside with Tesla, and I know people have been complaining this for a while, we'll see maybe in a couple of days in this releasing when the Model 3 Ludacris comes out. But a lot of people complain with Tesla, I got the performance fast one. No one can tell. It looks Me. the exact same. <laughs> I right? complained about Whereas that. Whereas like other brands will be like, sure, we'll give you your rhombus, we'll give you your M badge and colors. I mean, they'll do whatever. And that, that's the funniest thing because I always compare that to how BMW does it. Cause I'm like, Tesla needs to have an M badge carbon fiber or something. Exactly. Yeah. But then I'm here complaining about like the middle trims having the M badge. I just, I really, I don't know. I'm weird about that. Max, let's talk a little about these door handles. Cause I would say they are very different compared to how Model S is. I don't love them, but they feel nice. Mm -hmm. It's just a weird action, I would say. I'm used to just pulling it out here and coming up on it. I don't know, to me just feels a little strange. But these are never gonna fail to actuate in cold climates. Hopefully, I don't know. You could definitely have some ice build up on there and then maybe not be able to get your hand in here, but we'll see about that. I mean, it's just, it has a weird feeling to me. It definitely feels I would say premium, but not luxury. I'm weird with door handles. Again, every time you get in a car, it needs to feel nice. Yeah. That's just one of my things. Model S, I hate the door handles on it. So just a little spoiler alert there. But honestly, Max, there's nothing that, to me that screams like, I'm really out of place on this car. Now, again, this is a press car, but in true honesty, this is what I expect to see on customer delivered BMWs. Tesla and BMW are very different. In my impression, what Tesla does, they slap the cars together, they send them to the service center, 
a folk like Max or I goes and picks it up and go, my car has panel gaps. You set up a service appointment and take it back to the service center where I think BMW is just like, here's your car, it's nearly perfect, on you go. So that's my impression with it. Now we have big boy 21s on here, which are an option, Max. What I do like about this is they have aero covers in here, but they very sneakily hidden these. So you can see this entire area here is actually a plastic cover, but matches very nice in there. Nice. Giving it that kind of full, I don't know, full aero package there. It's, it's a really nice looking wheel. That's one of the things I really, really like about this car, how it sits on the wheel. It just looks fantastic compared to the stock Model S wheels over there, which of course are the non-optioned ones, I guess. It's night and day difference how much better those look. This one, of course, you actually get some nice colored brakes on this. But Max, give me your thoughts on this. I mean, you've been around, you've edited these build quality videos. What do you think about the i5 here? Um, I've got to be honest, I haven't spent a lot of time with the i4 and the other BMW electric offering. So this is the most exposure I've had in quite a while. Uh, and I've got to say, I like it. We'll get into interior and ergonomics. I mean, like this car definitely can see how it suits a lot of people who are used to having a premium luxury car. That said, for a lot of people my age and, and even me, you know, in some ways, some of the tech forward aspects of brands like Tesla, as well as Rivian, uh, but really right, who else is making a sports sedan in this category besides Tesla or maybe Lucid? Um, there's just a lot more appealing technology in this, right? I can walk around with my phone as the key. It's got sentry mode. It's got all those forward thinking things. Uh, I'm sure the paint's gonna suck and the build quality will be much worse than the BMW. And that's definitely a factor. But I think that a lot of people will just be swayed not only by the numbers on paper with the Tesla, but just the whole experience with how the technology works, the supercharger network. Of course, this vehicle will get access um, in North America soon to Tesla superchargers with the use of an adapter. In Europe, it already can. Uh, but the seamlessness, I don't think is gonna ever quite be there. And that's just the benefit of Tesla being both a first mover and behaving very differently. But Colton, we've looked a lot at that. I think let's, you know, people watching this are probably pretty familiar with Model S, so we don't need to spend a ton of time on it. Yep. But what are the big exterior things you notice on Model S that distinguish it from the iPad? Yeah, here, I'll hand you this. Let's just take a walk around and see if there's anything that is like glaringly obvious. I mean, when you start getting down to it, like you can see, immediately I can tell this hood is sitting down over this fender. It's not quite perfect. You're gonna notice with Teslas that you just have larger gaps in general than the BMW. Now, I was a little surprised that, you know, that front to rear door on the i5 was around five, five and a half millimeters. That to me seems slightly thick, I would say, Max, compared to what you see from like Porsche and Audi. They're very, very tight very seamless lines on there. But you just start looking around this, you see areas like this down here where the side skirt is completely sticking out, not perfectly aligned. Again, do I think these small little areas make a huge difference? No, but I have customers come in here and I have some of them say, you know, after I detail their car, did you find anything as far as panel gaps and I walk them through and then they go, I wish you wouldn't have told me because now that's all I can stare at. For example, the Model 3 refresh we just had in here had one of these little uh, rubber seal in here that was sticking up and they're like, we never noticed that. And that's all they could stare at the entire time they were here. So yep. I think some of these things, no people don't notice them and it takes a detailed eye to look at. But I just think like if you're paying Seventy thousand, eighty thousand dollars for a car. In my impression, it should be nicely built, and you should be proud of a car that's well manufactured and well built. Yeah, and the thing we've seen with Tesla, where some of the panel gaps and things are really egregious, is people will say, "Oh, it's only a cosmetic thing." Sometimes it can be so bad that it not it necessarily isn't right. Like if you've got a bunch of like uh, misaligned panels, at some point you're going to notice the weather ceiling is not performing well. You're going to have noise. Uh, you might have. Uh, I think you saw a Model X. You looked at with the you know crazy uh, all glass roof. There was an issue with the lift gate where it was uh, kind of colliding in on itself, potentially shattering the whole glass. Exactly. That was actually on a Model S Plaid. Oh, Model so, S. Okay. Ninety-five thousand dollar rig. <laughs> This one is almost doing the same thing. So Max, I wanna show you this. This glass does not sit perfectly, like even sort of. It's yep. actually underneath basically the body panel when you're yep. looking at it. Here sticks up. 
Look at this gap here, Max. Yeah. I can fit an entire pinky finger in there. Yep. And this is just absolutely massive. Let me try and get a little bit of a measurement on here. So I'll show you guys exactly where it was doing. I mean, that is realistically, it's hitting the bottom there. That's probably going to be almost nine millimeter gap in that. So like double what the BMW has over there. Now, where the Teslas often struggle, Max, which is one of my favorite features on this versus the i5, is the lift back. I just heard so many clicks and rattles. So many noises. Yeah. Like, immediately louder, for sure. Max, if you come over here, I wanna show you. Hopefully you can see it. So, back in this area, maybe you can come down ever so slightly and kind of look through here. This glass often, if it's not perfectly aligned, actually touches the rear structural brace that goes over on the sunroof here. Yep. This one is literally within a hair of touching it. So oh. I think over time, you can start seeing it if you actually look at it, but that's gonna start touching paint here very, very soon. And what I mean by this is when you close this down, first off, Max, this is 10 times louder. And <laughs> just noises everywhere. <laughs> we have the quack going on this, of course, with one of the lock horns, but so much louder and just in that. Also, experience. just the actuation, so non linear, right? The BMW is just like a perfectly Smooth. straight line. This is just like accelerating, oops, slows yep. down. I mean, it, it's really not the same. My performance does the same thing. So I have a 23 Model 3 performance open up the rear trunk on it and it does this, it pulses. <laughs> and it's like, is this thing gonna fly off or yeah. what is it gonna and do? I know you mentioned that with your performance, but this is the thing I always find funny about Tesla. You pointed this out, right? Recent Model 3s in particular have really dialed in the build quality. They're by no means up there with you know Porsche or anything, but they're not bad. And in many ways, Model 3 and Y coming out of the factory seem to be more dialed in than the Model S and the X. Now, part of that might be because they're doing more ambitious design things like the all glass roofs and all of that. But, but it, Model Y has that too. Yeah. So you know what like, I mean? It's like Tesla is basically screwing over the customers who are paying the most for their vehicles, which to me is kind of the opposite of the German brands where it's like you get a decontented base three series. You're, it's like, okay, I get it for the badge. It's going to have very few features. I'm going to be nickel and dime. However, the thing with the German brands is like with the i5 or the i7, you start spending a lot and you actually do get a lot of return for it. Yeah, so on one thing, I always find this funny and I always go back to Porsche with it. I love that with Porsche, you can build exactly the car you want. Like you can spec a Taycan with no rear camera at all. Yeah. So like, that's cool. If you want a driver spec and you don't care about that, or you can just, you have to spend all the money to get all the features where like this just comes with absolutely everything. So I think Max, what I'm getting at here is, when you purchase a Tesla, it's a very different experience. I know you hate me saying this, Max, behind the camera there. I always think of Tesla as the Apple of the car industry and everything else as the Android, using different plugs than everybody else and just the way they integrate everything through the phone app. For example, this customer showed up today. He forgot his key at home. What would you do with the BMW? Because he got in with his <laughs> phone key. He sent me a text. Within two seconds, I had full access to his car my phone remote key working absolutely perfect. Like that's just the integration that I would love to see on something like the BMW. To me, honestly, Max, that's where this in a weird kind of roundabout way feels more luxurious than that yeah. using like normal, normal technology. So I don't know, just weird things, but you can see, Max, I just want you to look at this taillight. So look at this gap that comes down here. Let me try and get you a measurement here almost six and a half in between six and a half and seven. And then up here where it's nearly touching paint. Oh. Like it's, it's not even close to being the same. So these are the little things. Let's run over here to the other side. So this again was what? That's right at six and a half ish. And then you come over here and you're at three and a half millimeters. So like completely off there. And this is one solid panel that should be perfectly aligned. Same thing going on here. You see this side is actually a lot tighter. Look how perfect that is. This side fits perfectly. Yeah. It seems so weird to me. Tesla's driver side um, rear hatches are always better than the passenger. It's like they align these and they're like, whatever happens over there happens. The passenger is <laughs> gonna get in over there. Very strange. I mean, even look at this charge port here. 
This is literally almost touching paint down here. And then you probably have, I'm gonna say, oh my gosh, six millimeter gap up there, like literally touching. That is very uneven. And it's not responding now. Hello, wake up. There we go. See, that's the funny thing. You're just talking about the, you know, amazing technology and I agree with you. Things like texting someone a key. Exactly. And yet sometimes the Bluetooth key on Tesla's will not work. There we go, finally. But it's just, I don't know, it's so strange. Same thing here on this taillight. I think this is funny. You literally have a body line that should line up with that and it's not even close. Yeah. Like the light needs to come all the way over here. You have a massive gap up here, really tight down here. And it's like, okay, they just, this is what I'm getting at. They don't really care about the build quality. It's just let the service centers handle it if the customers have an issue. And maybe that's smart because are most customers gonna complain? Probably not. I don't know. A lot of people, at least this may be a, a, a funny example because the people who do care bring their cars here. So it's like everybody who comes here, they're like, please let me know if you find any panel gaps. And I ask some people who don't say, do you want to know if I find anything? Half the time they're like, I don't want to hear anything. I, it's perfectly fine to me and they, they don't want to see it. So I do understand that. But it's just like you look at rubber seals like this area, Max, look how this is sitting up here and then it's tucked underneath there. That to me is just, it's very mm. indicative of a company just slapping parts together. Do I think there's anything wrong with that? It's annoying for me because I'm particular about it, but I think 99% of people buying this probably wouldn't notice that unless I pointed it out to them. Yeah. Now areas even down here, this bumper not sticking out perfectly, body lines not perfect. You just start to notice these little things on these cars, even down here. Let me take a little measurement. Yeah, right at about five there, but I can see the doors sticking out just tiny little things. Yep. Now, my least favorite thing about the Model S, door handles. Listen to how loud these are. Oh. Every time you walk by this car with phone key, so while I'm here detailing the car, every time I walk away from it, these pop out and it is just this sound. It sounds like nails on a chalkboard to me. That to me doesn't immediately feel like a premium experience. I don't love those handles, but I like them better than this. Yeah. You pop them open and it's this weird fake mechanical feel, I would say is the best way to describe it. Model S door handles have never been great. And the th weird thing is they've always been refining and changing it since the 2012 launch Model S, right? Because initially there were reports of them freezing in ice and just you know, be being generally terrible outside of California where yeah. it was designed. And Tesla has worked on it, obviously, but they still haven't perfected it. And maybe that tells you that maybe this isn't the best design for a door handle. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. It's like, I look at the Falcon wing doors. Okay, yeah, sure, that's kind of cool looking, but then you start using it and really interacting with it. And now that they've gone away from ultrasonic sensors to save money because vision only is the way now for Tesla, you literally are starting to have to shove the front doors out because they have no real sensors in the doors. The Falcon wing doors are doing whatever yep. they want. And I have to state before people say we're Tesla haters, you own, like, I own, you've two, owned Teslas. two Teslas right now. You've owned lots of Teslas. I love them. You've got a referral code. I think people can use that yeah. if they want to buy one. Yeah. I mean, like, Please buy a non well built like, car for me. <laughs> you, you're, I mean, you're a very enthusiastic, passionate owner. And that just some of the, I don't know, realities of this brand. Every brand has its realities. I think though, like if anyone from Tesla is watching this, we need a series on YouTube of Franz living with these cars and the realities of some of them. Cause it's like, okay, you're gonna brag about your beautiful design. And I will say, I think Model S has always been a really good looking vehicle. Yeah. Let's see you actually live with some of the imperfections because how are you delivering cars for $90,000 plus uh, over 10 years into production that are like this. Yeah, and it's, you know, the complaints about the door handles, people say, oh, Model S door handles are great. On Kyle's Plaid, we literally had one of them where the door handle failed and the door would not close. So on the way to the service center, because it had to go in, it wasn't a mobile service deal, we had to have somebody sit in the back passenger seat holding the door closed. Like, that's not gonna happen in your BMW. It may, but I just, if These it does, things. then the Germans have a big problem. <laughs> yeah, they're going to come pick that up on a flatbed. Yeah. So sorry, here's some beer, here's some, uh, yeah. you know, uh, uh, a car that you can drive for and a few days. Reason, yeah. yeah, exactly. So I think that's, I guess, quite a bit it on the exterior fit and finish. If you want a really, really in-depth Model S, Model S Plaid build quality review, we've got a few of them on the channel now. So I definitely recommend you go check those out. Now, <laughs> the quack always gets me. 
Max, where I think the biggest differences are is the interior between these two yep. cars. So let's just quickly look at the Model S. We're not gonna spend a ton of time in here, um, but it's definitely different, I would say, than most Teslas, whereas you have, as the door handles, I have phone key. My phone is in my pocket, will not unlock. So we're just bragging about how amazing all this stuff is, Max, and what just happened. And I will say one quick thing, I know this video isn't about the tech, um, even though you said the BMW is lower tech with its key, and we should spend a moment uh, to Colton talking about the fob for that BMW, because it is the cheapest feeling thing I've ever felt. It's terrible. But I will say the BMW uses that new technology with the Apple wallet yes, um, on point. the phone, and that is the way to do phone keys. It works amazingly well. It's actually more secure than Bluetooth. It's more responsive. I hope every car in the industry uses that. Okay. Yeah, totally fair. That's just my tech nerd note. <laughs> no, and I agree with you. I should have brought that point up earlier. But so jumping in here, now this is an optioned interior, of course. This is the cream interior. So you have the walnut wood on here. It's not my personal cup of tea. I just go white interior every time. Max, I'm finally glad to see we're not dealing with the ridiculous yoke situation in this particular car, at least. They're still charging for yokes. Can you even Some believe that? Some people are paying the retrofit a yoke on their Tesla. That's insane. I mean, everyone's got their own dice. <laughs> they, they do. <laughs> now, one thing about Model S, refresh has changed so much over the early Model S's. I finally, Max, think this is a nice place to be. So for one, look at the sunroof up here. It is huge. Wow. Well, the i5 has a sunroof in it. This is like two sunroofs compared to the we'll i5. Talk about the i5, but the i5 uh, vents, which I think is really nice. The vents. You like the vents. I like having a oh, functional gosh. sunroof. And also it has a oh, shade. I thought you were talking about the vents on the dash. We'll get to that too, because yeah, I have yeah. a lot of thoughts. Yeah, but no, no, but I love that's like a functional sunroof. And this isn't just the Tesla thing out of Polestar, Rivian. Every electric car brand, especially the startup, seem to think that people don't want a mechanical sunroof. And I hard disagree with that. I love being able to vent it. Um, it's just a really nice thing to do. You can functionally passively defog that way. Also, having a retractable shade, wouldn't yes. that become an option? And like th this is ridiculous i see tesla owners with their cyber trucks and their model s you know hundred thousand dollar vehicles and you've got to buy some twenty dollar plastic thing from the tesla accessory website just so you can have a comfortable uh non-hot roof yep or put ceramic tint on it or keep <laughs> on your climate control so your car doesn't overheat but it's it's just crazy one thing I do love about this over the i5 max is how the screens integrate here i personally like this and you know, in Model 3, it's really funny. I like only having the center display. I drive two of them. I prefer it. Mm. But this is also nice for different information. You have your speed in here. You it's can really dim map. right now, actually. Yes. Could you get in maybe touch the brake so we can yep. turn it on? Definitely um, can here. I will say one note. You know, the BMW doesn't have bad screens. I actually find the quality of them, we'll talk about the interior, isn't bad. Um, but Tesla always kills it with their screens. I mean, yes. these are just like the best computer monitor you've ever looked at. It's in your car. And now with the refresh, right, this will actually swivel the center one. Yeah, exactly. So that's, it's just one of those cool things. Kyle hates this, I know. He's like, when every time I drive his Model S, it automatically comes <laughs> out in my profile. But just like the ease of use. Yes, I know phone key just failed. It does that quite often, but it is better than having a fob in my impression. Yeah. But just having your profiles in here, mine, he literally sent me the phone key and I'm sitting exactly where I sit in Kyle's plaid. That is the coolest thing ever. Now, I think over BMW, the cloud, right across vehicles. Yep. I think BMW has very similar technology to that, but it's this just integrates so much better. The software, we don't need to get too far into this. You know where everything is. I think, yes, you can spend some time with the BMW. Alyssa and I were in this today. Just I had to go pick it up. I could not find a single setting. I'm like Same. menus deep. I had to do some charge testing on this, and I'm by no means uh, you know Luddite when it comes to technology, and I had to dig deep to make sure I had the fans on the mode so I could get maximum charging speed, which, by the way, yeah. why is that an option? If I'm at a fast charger, I want the fastest possible charge. Don't make give me an option. Tesla, 
Tesla, I think has always excelled at simplicity in the interface. You see that even in this maps display. One, oh my gosh, these screens are so responsive. I've yes. always loved that. And then just two, your Apple analogy, where I think that most fits of Tesla is their approach to software. I don't think it always matches with their, as we've seen, hardware quality, right? Mm -hmm. Apple does make very good products. Tesla does occasionally, but they also have their issues. Sure. But when it comes to the software, they have very similar values. I think it's just such a high quality, responsive interface, so instantly readable. And the BMW, yep. yes, you actually have, I think, most of the technology and features we love here, except they're much more accessible here. I can find them instantly, like it's way more intuitive. Okay, if you're not used to a Tesla, then it, maybe it's it can a, be a lot. It's a lot to get used to, but once you do, it's just this ecosystem. It makes sense. Like you, like you said, you know, you move between Kyle's Plaid and this, and everything syncs. I mean, it's just boom, done. Like beautiful. Spotify's here. Yeah. Like everything's just built in. So yeah. this is my Spotify playlist in here. I didn't do anything. He literally texted me this within two seconds. It was on my phone. My steering wheel's in the same place. Seats in the same place. It's just that integration is crazy when you go between cars. Yeah. Um, now, Max, the interior and Model S, I think, has grown up substantially. We have a lot new materials in here. We, of course, have vegan leather being one of the biggest. Now, I personally, I still hate the word vegan leather. I say this in every video. I think there's no real other way for Tesla to name this to be something that people want because I was thinking about it. Okay, maybe you say it's synthetic leather. Then I think you're getting a cheap leather, whereas vegan, it has kind of this connotation that it's healthier for the environment and all that stuff. I'm telling you as a detailer, vegan leather is 10 times better than regular leather, maybe but unless you get to like qualify that a Rolls Royce. Every brand has its own formulation. A hundred percent. Yeah. BMW has some of the cheapest feeling leather and some of the nicest feeling leather. It really depends on which one you get. For example, the i4 that we had here at the shop, the interior in that, okay, yes, it's leather. It felt so plasticky. It just did not even feel good. This is so smooth, Max. It cleans up amazingly well. So I have three golden retrievers. I throw them in the back seats. They don't scratch the seats up. They're super easy to clean. It's unbelievable. Yep. But, you know, just looking around here, you have, of course, space for your phones. Very, very minimalistic. But then you get to areas like this. I was playing with this. Oh, no. Like, that is just, you don't get the the feeling of just absolute quality. But I do love how, like, packaging they've done here. It's I can get, like, most of my arm in there. It's very, very spacious. But it's just little things like, you know, that, that... Yeah, that's just, I don't know. It's gonna rattle around. Model S has always been very, very rattly. The steering wheel has been changed substantially, having no stocks here. Big complaint of mine. Um, you may completely disagree. For me, I'm a one-handed driver. When I'm driving down the road, I need to make a left turn. I have to take my hand off of the wheel, place it over here, hit that, and look at it. It's annoying, I hate it. Yep. Now, Max, for this, for the drive selector, I don't mind it whatsoever. I think it works very, very well. Cameras on here are quite good. We still have no front camera on Model S, which we are rumored to have. We have no ambient lighting, which we are rumored to have. So these are all the cameras you have here. I would say this is hardware four camera, looks pretty good, but then you go in the i5 and you have a 360 cam, so much better cameras. Yep. Um, other points on here that I want to make before we get into i5. Door panel. Max, I'm going to have you pop out. Let's come talk about this real quick. Just materials and material use. So let's look at this door panel here. This is all vegan leather. Very, very soft to the touch. We've also got the wood inlay here, which will change if you get a plaid, it'll go carbon fiber here. You have a nice little aluminum piece, an accented color. The most important thing is all down here to me. This is all soft touch vegan leather. It very, very nicely cleans up well. It looks really good. But then you look at stuff like this, the stitching's completely off. So I would say in certain areas, I like this materials more than the BMW, but it's just the execution sometimes of seeing things like this that don't perfectly line up. Quickly, Max, let's just jump in the back here. We're not gonna show too much back here, except for rear screen. The back seat of these is fine. It's very, very minimal. I like having a rear screen back there. It is in a weird location, I would say, um, but you know, for kids that are a little lower to the ground, may not be an issue, but 
I really have not a ton of complaints with the interior Model S. I think it's premium. It's definitely not luxury because it is so minimalistic. So before we spend too much more time, let's jump over to the i5 because you're going to see a very different experience. One quick thing, Colton, I'm curious. We can compare this to the i5. What do you think of frameless windows? Because that's a big difference between these cars. The Model S is one of those vehicles with frameless windows. And I know people have very divided opinions about that. You just opened a hot bucket, <laughs> hot button topic for me. I hate frameless windows. For one, they're noisier. They are always going to be noisier. The way they sit on the glass, they're frustrating, they're annoying. Now, with Model S, one of the most annoying things, this is all Teslas having frameless windows, is you can see it rolls down here. So you always get streaks all over these windows. Mm. So it pops down. When you open this window, you have to go in and now clean this area with the door closed sitting in the car. And I had a Mini Cooper with frameless windows, and it was funny, like my pet peeve was I'd have passengers, so I'd always have to remind, please close it by the door, because people would try to grab onto the glass and close it that way. And So that's funny because I I yeah. saw somebody comment when I was doing the Model 3 refresh that I close it by the glass. I still close these cars by the glass. So when I close a car door, I grab it here and close it. I know that's sacrilege for most people, Max, but I would rather touch the glass than the paint. The glass is quite strong. Now, one more point I actually do want to make here, front trunk. So we actually have a front trunk here in the Model S, but <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't know who designed this hood. This is absurd. It, it Honestly, if you get a two mile an hour breeze, I worry that this thing is going to go that situation we'll and go over. There's the duck. We'll open the i5 um, front trunk. I should no front trunk in that, but the hood in a second and see the comparison. But this is funny because, you know, we've been talking about how Tesla is like Apple. And yet this, like if we were talking about laptop lids, this would be like the cheapest Windows laptop yeah. ever yeah, with its hinge. Whereas now we're going to open the BMW. That feels more like a MacBook. Yeah. So, I mean, that's just one of those things. This is the same on S, same on X, not on Model 3 or Y. I just don't understand how this is... <laughs> made it through production. And it's like, if you open your front trunk, I mean, God forbid you live in Wyoming and have a Model S and you're facing the wind, this thing is gonna be in your windshield. And it's annoying because you might actually wanna use the front trunk on this because you've got lots of space. I use my front trunks. I really, really do. I have three dogs, like I said, you know, we go walking with them, they get muddy, throw muddy shoes, throw stinky food in there, whatever it may be. It just seems a lot, yeah useful to me. So Max, you've hopped in the i5 now. There is so much different about this than Model S. First off, just a lot more buttons. We also have ambient lighting in here. Now, what do you think of the ambient lighting? We have this kind of crystal, I don't know, rhombus effect, I guess you would say on here. It looks pretty wild, especially at night. I like the ambient lighting idea. We've seen even the Model 3 refresh do that, but I don't like what BMW has done with the crystal pattern. And something about the, I don't, I'm guessing this is some kind of acrylic or something. Sure. I noticed driving this around, it's very sunny in Colorado. This just reflects and is shiny. Mm. I'm sure this looks amazing at night, but in the day, it just feels, to be honest, kind of cheap and gaudy. Okay. Yeah. I completely disagree. I really like it. Okay. <laughs> um, it, and I think, you know, that's the thing with any car is we're going to have different opinions and that's why I like having Max here sometimes, you know, he's not a huge Tesla enthusiast. Whereas like I nine times out of 10, I'm like, just get a Tesla, even though build quality may not be quite as nice. Now I want to make one first impression here, Max. This seems so much more cramped than Model S. When I initially got in this, I just felt like it had the car had shrunk down. i5 is not a small car by any stretch of the imagination. No. I think one of the biggest things that has to do with that is the glass roof for one. So of course you can see this is literally half the size. Now the nice thing with it though, Max, is you actually have a shade, but it goes from the opposite way. I've never seen it go from the front. Yep, that's weird. So I strange. Very, very strange. Um, the other thing that I noticed, the center console. So, you know, okay, we're in a, a, a big dollar BMW that's electric. Why do we have this huge tunnel here where basically your drive shaft would go through and transmission in a gas vehicle. Because they built it on a shared platform, so they had to use the space. They do package it, I believe, with electronics and batteries, but nonetheless, you know, us man spreaders will have issues with this. I always bang my knees in my Polestar, uh, and I just love how 
cars like the Model S, even a Chevy Bolt, a Rivian R1S. So many electric vehicles from the ground up have this cavity that's just more comfortable. You could put a purse or groceries down there or just your knees. Uh, this is, you know, more of that cockpit feel, which you may or may not like. I will say, Colton, though, this aspect of the center console, um, we can talk about the haptics and the piano black finish all we want. I actually really like the touch points, though. This is the biggest difference, I would say, on the interior between Tesla and a lot of other premium brands is this approach, right? Tesla is everything on a touchscreen. Here, you've got this knob, and I don't know about you, I am addicted to just like scrolling through menus. I was driving earlier, and yes, I was driving with my hand off the wheel, yeah. and I'm just sitting there doing this. It's Every so stoplight, I'm just, brrr, just... It's, like, it's yeah. a really well actuated, similar thing for the volume knob. I. I don't actually love the uh, haptic buttons as much, but at least the like parts that move are really nice. The weirdest thing to me about this, it's like, why do you put a huge gloss black piece right where you're interacting with literally everything? Now, the nice thing, Max, is this is, of course, a touchscreen still. So I guess you could yep. mostly get away with but not using it's this. it's not as ergonomic and definitely won't motorize out like the Model S screen. So like BMW, you can tell, wants you to kind of use this. This is how I drive. Their software has yep. always worked. Yes, they give you the touchscreen option. But to be honest, like especially if you're a short king, I don't know how you're going to like reach the sure. screen. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a fair point there. I, initial impressions just going between these two, the screen on the Model S is so much nicer. I'm not a big matte screen um, guy. I just think it takes away from the clarity of the screen and yeah. kind of the depth of it. Mm -hmm. This is not bad by any means, but to me, it looks like the dash was created and then they go, oh, well, we got to put a big screen on here. Let's just slap it on the front there. So yeah. I don't think it's as well integrated in my personal opinion. Yep. Now, Max, there's some weird things going on with the vents in this. I don't know if you've caught on to this. We have these little digital sliders <laughs> for the amount of air, and then you're going, okay, where are the actual air vents at? We have one right here. How do you think you adjust that? It's this little toggle wheel down here, which I literally got in the car and said, oh no, somebody broke these off. These are the weirdest thing I have ever seen in a car. I wouldn't say they feel cheap, but they don't feel like anything I would expect. It's it's, it's a weird approach because right, what Tesla has always done or what they've done for a while since Model 3 has been to have um, remote actuated climate vents that are hidden inside of the car's trim and you move and manipulate with a touchscreen where you want the air to go. Here it's remote, but it's mechanical. So like the vent is actually hidden here, but I'm moving it with this switch and it's weird. It's so strange. <laughs> I mean, I will say those of you who don't like the Tesla makes you go into a menu and a screen, yeah. do it, at least these are always going to be here. But that said, like even not driving, I just like feel weird moving these. I yeah, I totally agree. Now, some other points I'm seeing in here, just like uh, phone heaters. The Model S <laughs> the looks, charger, yes, yeah. the Model S looks so much better. Yeah, I would say in that particular these area. These are more functional because I like that one, they're grippier, so your phone's not going to slide yep. around as much than, instead of the felt Tesla uses. And I think these have better cooling characteristics sure. where the Tesla felt is just going to attract heat. Yep. I'm just purely aesthetic wise, like this to me looks a little cheaper in my impression. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, we've got some little ports back here. More lighting in the cup holders. It's, just, it's gloss black everywhere, which drives me nuts. Now, one thing that does not drive me nuts, Max, is these seats. Man, are these seats comfortable. And I think these are quite an upgraded option. This came with the Lux pack, I Funny believe. thing is these aren't, they're perforated. As you can see, they are not ventilated, which I think is unfortunate given this is a nearly $70,000 oh, That is car. a big no-go for yeah. a detailer. So <laughs> I say this all the time. I hate perforated seats. You get crumbs in here. If you actually use your car, like you have kids in it, you have dogs, maybe you're just by yourself. Stuff gets in these. Yep. If you're not even going to have a purpose of having ventilated seats in this car, why put that in there? I don't know. That's just a little weird. Now, I got to say, Max, is this, uh, I could be wrong, but I think this is real leather and yep. it feels unbelievably nice even Neat. compared to model s over yep. there my polestar has napa leather this feels i would say even nicer than that yeah definitely agree um material wise so dash up here we again have more leather i would say this this is the bmw stuff that i start getting weird with yeah this feels a little plasticky to me max but it's very like it's not like um cheap feeling it's very solid it's just not particularly luxury yeah totally agree so i'm gonna swing over here and talk about this 
This up in this area, same as the dash, basically here where you'd either put your arm up here. I don't think you're gonna interact with this a ton, but it definitely is a little hard. And again, that plasticky. Now here, the speaker vent, this is beautiful. Look how nice that is. Another upgrade, Bowers and Wilkins. Yes. And I will say sound system in this is- It rips. It's great. Yeah, really, really nice. Ambient lighting strip in here, we have kind of pushy capacitive oh those are not good i don't want my unlock and lock buttons to feel mushy like if i'm driving around and yeah. suddenly you know the neighborhood changes i'm locking the car yeah i want to be sure i'm pressing the right button totally agree <laughs> that that feels a little no-go and then i get to the place where all bmws really fall apart for me is this stuff it is like a scratchy rubber now i have to say here it feels premium like there's no movement in this as i literally just heard it crack as i did <laughs> That. You were giving it some force. I though. was, yeah. for sure. But I just, this area to me, the plastics they use here, this has to be nicer than Model S. I think the Model S door card, in my opinion, because all this down here, very, very cheap plastic. Even down here on the side of the doors, all hard kick plastic, where that in the Model S is all carpet. This all down here is nice vegan leather. Even this area, very plasticky, very scratchy. Now again, we have some leather over here. This leather feels completely different to the seat. Yeah. So that's my little rant. This is where I can tell you're not a BMW person, Colton. No. Because like BMW fans are very used to this. Uh, the brand, you know, the, in recent years, they've gotten more luxury, but they've always been very kind of focused on like cars that feel solid and durable. And so like stiffness is, is obviously very important. And that's not to imply that like, you know, the door cards are structural, but I've always found BMWs have this like, you know, where you're not touching materials they're, Yeah, they're not going to be felt. It's not a Mercedes. It's not even a new Model S, right? It's not going to be very soft, but it's yeah. going to be very like German and competent. That's always the personality and character I found. I like it, but some people don't. Yeah, I just think like Model S door cards on this just crush it. Detail though, I love Colton. If you open the rear door, these seat belts have padding, um, which what? is amazing. So check this out. Touch what that rear seat belt is resting on. Look. Oh, this? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, it's basically a full side bolster but there. But it's amazing because not only is it a bolster for the passenger, you're never going to get rattle from that seatbelt like you would in so many other cars. Yeah, Model S has a huge area right here that always rattles because they're held in by basically alligator clips. And <laughs> yeah, not quite as nice. Now, here's the hilarious thing to me, Max. The new Model 3 refresh gets ambient lights. This near $80,000 BMW has no rear ambient lighting. Here's so, my take, Colton. I okay. think ambient lighting is not a premium feature. I know a lot of people who say that feels like a teenager's gaming PC, right? With the RGB lights. Some people love it. And I know you like it in the front. It would be nice, I think, if they match in the rear, but it's subtlety. I don't think this is cost cutting on BMW's part. I think this is just design. Because if you look here, the Bowers and Wilkins actually does seem to have, I don't know if this is, is this all. If it's always blue or if it's an RGB strip, but they've got lighting here. So there's yeah, like there is a little. weird details. There's accent lighting I can see in here as well. So let me just give you my impression of the back seat. BMW did a good job up front and then just said, <laughs> we need some sort of back seat, just throw it in there. There is no content back here. Those seats look about as flat as humanly possible. Like, I don't think it's a luxurious space to sit in. Model S back seat, in my impression, way nicer. Just look at yeah. the materials here. All of this really cheap plastic down here that I was complaining about on the back of the seats, same thing where you have all vegan leather there. You have no screen. Do we even have rear heated seats in this one, Max? Uh, this model does I not, I believe, have rear heated seats. I can't find buttons for them anywhere. I'm sure it's an option somewhere in the 5 Series. You do get USB-C ports and you do get these, I think, slots for like a tablet holder or something you can put in here. Um, I do have to kind of disagree with you though. I feel like, yes, it doesn't have as many like gizmos and gadgets as Tesla or many other rear seats. There's no screen here, but it does feel to me premium and space wise, I'm actually pretty happy with it. I'm a taller person, so are you. And I find mm -hmm. the space in this isn't bad. It's not like, it's definitely, you know, no uh, town car. It's not like sleep in it, but it's perfectly fine for long road trips, I think. I think it's adequate, but for $80,000, in my opinion, should be much nicer. It just feels like, like just looking here on camera, this feels like a totally different car up front to the back seat. I just feel like they decontented 
everything on here. Like the door panel looks like it's straight out of a two series to me. It does not look nice at all. We still have some of the same materials. This actually feels okay. More cheap plastic, more really cheap plastic. I'm just, it's weird to me. The Germans all do this, Max. And this is my complaint in so many of the German cars. I'm thinking EQE, EQS does the same thing where they just like literally throw a bench seat back there and put nothing in the back seat. So that's my impression. I find the Model S rear seat to be much nicer. Door cards feel nicer. Seats are much better. You have a screen back there. You have rear heated seats as a standard option. Just a few of those little things for yeah. sure. We've hinted at this before, but we should um, open the, did we open the trunk in this already? I think we did. I think Let's we did. open the front trunk on this uh, and see what that's like. Now, this is not powered, and I don't think BMW expects people to use it because as we're about to see, there's no actual storage space in it. So you, you're not opening this in an app. You've got to go <laughs> down here, push it twice, because that's the BMW way, and then you can lift this up. It is at least strut-based. There's Holy. no prop rod, but there's a whole lot of plastic I, I don't even know where to start with this, Max. This looks like the cheapest thing I've ever seen. But this I ain't. I, ooh, that moved a little bit, but not quite as much as Model S. I just, to me, it's like, why even have this openable, I guess, other than to service? But like, Washer fluid, this yeah. plastic cover is hideous. Yep. And I'm, it's huge. I'm sure there's a bunch of electronics under here, but again, this is the downside of having a platform that you are sharing with a gas car. Can we pop this off here? Is it pretty simple to pop off? Uh, let's see if there's tabs. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, this is just ridiculous. Oh, there's a lot Dude, of wasted space. What? In <laughs> Look at how much space. Now, to be fair, like that's clearly structural. We've got high voltage components oh there. Gosh. It's hot in here. It's um, really toasty in here. But like, you could see if they like you know, spent some effort. I'm sure they could figure out a way to put uh, some front goods in here. And you could say crash safety. I see nothing structural in the zone. I mean, they could at least give you a small front. Well, of course this doesn't have a front <laughs> motor, so that's where that would sit. But it's like, th this is what you get when you don't yeah. build a car ground up again. Look at the space up here. This is not a massive front trunk. Max. And this is an all wheel drive vehicle. So there's a front motor somewhere there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you have so much more space in that. But just think of like Rivian R1T, Rivian R1S, R2, all of those huge front trunks that are actually usable. Yep. And BMW is just like, nope, here's a nice uh, $3 plastic cover <laughs> that we're gonna make kind of look like a motor. I, mm. I'm not into that at all. That, does not scream luxury to me, Max. Uh, no, and it's definitely not what people have come to expect from modern EVs. Yeah, definitely, totally agree there. So, I don't know about you guys and your thoughts. I think the BMW, as Max is trying to get this to close, um, I think the BMW is a nice place to be in the front. Now, I, I think it, you can go either way, Max, on your preference, whether you want, you know, more screens and things like that, um, and buttons and, and different textures in here versus Model S and a definitely different design. It doesn't wow me, to be perfectly honest. And, you know, I've been saying this quite a bit as of late. I'm not a luxury car guy. I, I buy cars that are meant to have fun. This to me just screams, I need to go to the golf course. I got to go to my country club, Business need to go meeting. to Whole Foods. Yeah. And like a Model S is, I guess, very similar to that, but I feel like you can have a lot more fun for basically the same amount of money in that car yeah. well, and then, have the unbelievable supercharger network to go anywhere in the country, which this will obviously hopefully have with the adapters very, very shortly here. Right, the magic of Model S, do they still offer the uh, rear facing seats on it? I don't no. know. Okay, they used to, but like to me, it will always has been, you could theoretically fit seven people on it. It's a big lift back. Um, it's a very viable sports sedan. It's a potential grand tourer. Uh, and yes, like none of, it doesn't really, you know, it's not the best at any of those things, but it's always like been so good at so many things in a similar way to Model 3 uh, and like a Rivian R1S, right? Like my mom drives that, she's never gonna take it off road. That's maybe what it was designed for, but it's a great on-road vehicle. The best EVs generally, I think, uh, showcase the technology by just being proficient at so many things. This is not that at all. This is just BMW going with the old model and saying, we're gonna make a really nice five series. And don't get me wrong, it's a very nice five series, but it's not really reinventing the category.
Yeah, I totally agree. And I honestly, I don't even think this is a BMW thing. I think it's very much across the German EV landscape. Yeah. We own an ID4. I like the ID4 as a car. But I'm kicking myself for kind of not buying a Model Y now because the values tank so much. I'm getting very tired of the charging infrastructure with it. Yeah. Yes, I will be able to charge it eventually on you know Tesla's supercharger, but just basic things like route planning, preconditioning, they don't even have figured out in the ID4. No. I guess the new one does, but like you know, we spent fifty three, fifty four thousand dollars on this car, and it can do very minimal, basic EV functions on it. So, I, I think like the BMW though is definitely a nice, nice vehicle, Max. I really don't think somebody that is, you know, cross shopping this and a Model S would be completely disappointed if they bought an i five. I still think you're kind of buying into the brand ethos of BMW, this very imposing vehicle with the badge on it. Yeah. And if you go, you know, Tesla, you're definitely saying something very, very different yeah. and about maybe yourself. maybe you're buying against Tesla. Yeah, like you said, you know, maybe you don't like, you think the guy running it's crazy or you don't like the car. Like there, some people just won't consider a Tesla for whatever reason. And so maybe they think this is the best option. But the question I have is, and this can wait for another video, is it? Because the Lucid Air Pure exists and those have dropped in price to be comparable to this. And I would argue those are much better ground up EVs. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think, you know, we had, this was a, an interesting discussion, not totally based in build quality, but I think a lot of the build quality aspects go around with these when you start comparing them. There's no question me, Max, the i5 is a much better built vehicle than the Model S back here, but I'm very much surprised when you start looking at the interiors of Model S versus the i5, how- It's a power operation, forget about that. It's not powered. Oh, did you you're telling me I'm supposed to do this? Yes. That feels awful. Yeah, it does not feel great. <laughs> yeah. Just leave it there. Uh, there you go. Yeah. But I'm surprised how nice Model S interior feels even compared to this as phone keys or the normal keys going crazy. I don't think you're losing a ton in here. You're just losing some buttons, some some different design language, whereas you're just getting a very minimalistic, fully optioned, fully, you know, everything, instead of having to pay up for options like cooled seats and all the business yep. over there on the BMW. Yep, absolutely agree. Well, I know this has been a long one. Hopefully the chapter has helped with people, but any more final concluding thoughts, Colton? No, I mean, Model S, very similar to what I've seen in the past. This key. What is going on with this key, Max? <laughs> just gonna, Dude, I'm going to walk it away. <laughs> it is literally just going back and forth. Okay. Just don't touch the key, Max. But honestly, Model S to me has just been so unbelievably impressive um, as far as like the whole package, except for the build quality. I think if they got a lot of these things dialed in and actually like listened to some of, you know, complaints that I have, like yeah. Rivian listens to our videos and watches this stuff and they fix things. Yeah. Now the, the redeeming factor I will say here, and this could be just um, in our area is the service centers do a great job at fixing these vehicles but i've heard horror stories some of people course. say the service centers are getting worse so i think yeah. it could be location dependent and it and it definitely could be we just heard literally this morning as of layoffs of of 10 of tesla employees so mm -hmm. you know we're hearing folks in the service center that were great folks working there that are now gone so is that experience going to get worse as the future goes i just would like to see tesla build a car that they're really proud of and not have to do the whole service center shenanigans i much prefer getting a car that's well sorted well dialed in now again stay tuned i'm going to do a really in-depth build quality analysis on my um, customer and now friends i5 that he's road tripping out here from michigan yep david awesome dude yeah. can't wait to see that so thank you guys so much for watching max thanks for your opinions on this because i think it's important to say uh you know have conflicting opinions on tesla and the other cars in the industry i don't know Definitely let us know in the comments below, would you choose a Model S or an i5? See you in the next one soon. Bye-bye.